Ma'am, I have heard that Vastu says that there can be a death in the household if the entrance is facing south. Is it really true? If it was true, then why have any war or prisons? <laughs> can we just not have all the enemies and prisoners live in south facing entrance houses? Death will come only when the time comes. Please be assured. Each of the directions hold a specific meaning. This is known as cosmology and it is a part of traditional wisdom from different parts of the world. Heroes walk to the east, south, west and north in myths to access certain gifts from nature. There is no good and bad direction talked about here. The east is the direction to understand the meaning of one's birth and to gain knowledge. The west the direction to understand growth and health. The north is the direction to understand prosperity and south the direction to understand the meaning of death and rebirth with which comes the benefits of south as a direction of spiritual growth. They are all essential elements for the person to be in balance with the world of inner and outer reality. Oh, just because south refers to death and rebirth and is the direction of yama, it has been misunderstood and also misinterpreted as causing death, which brings so much fear in people's minds. Yeah, so in that case, since East is also just representing its own specific meaning, it doesn't actually make East facing entrance the best, right? It's the default option. By and large, the Eastern entrance would bring about good energies because it brings in the light and warmth of the morning sun. That's, it's as simple as that. But if the road is on the west of the plot, then entering from the east, which would be the rear of the building, would be a bad decision because it would affect the authority of the inhabitants adversely to enter from the back. Also, it represents a lack of power and ownership. In any case, there is a special calculation that is carried out for a new building. It is called Shad Ayadi, and this will offer the best direction specific to the owner or Yajaman. That means, since we should calculate the shutter ayadi for the owners to decide the best direction for their building, generalizing Vastu and saying this direction is good and the other direction is bad is wrong or absurd. Wow, this is so interesting. So, as per Shastras, all directions have their own meaning and could be beneficial depending on the individual's Shad Ayadi. That's right. But the tradition has not accepted the non-cardinal directions for the alignment of the building. Correction to obtain cardinal directions may not be possible in small plots, particularly in sloping terrain. In that case, we have to accept the existing directions and work with some corrective measures that, can, that have been recommended. So, when most so-called Vastu experts claim that something terrible will happen to us if certain corrections are not made immediately at our space, should we believe them? Uh, what about the immediate good effects that are promised once these corrections are done? Can changing Vastu alone change our lives? Let us look at the basis of Sanatana Dharma, which is the original name for Hinduism, to understand this idea of right and wrong. In the theoretical and philosophical framework of the Dharma, right and wrong are not placed on a linear system of opposites. The gradation is more complex and allows for many meanings and possibilities to coexist. For example, Asanas in the system of Hatha Yoga are not fixed. Based on the body capability of the person, many variations can be practiced. Similarly, Ayurveda speaks of understanding the individual prakriti or essential nature 
to be able to offer treatment through either medicine or diet. There is no single formula to be followed strictly. Unfortunately, in Vastu, the practitioners have created very rigid boxes and use fear to control people. It is very obvious that the Vastu of the house one resides in is one of many factors affecting a person's life. Therefore, projecting it as the sole aspect of negativity and the source of all problems is definitely a money-making proposition. There can be certain simple procedures to ascertain that the energies in the built form are conducive for wellness and balance. But just like there is no magic cure, magical cure for illness, there cannot be a permanent state of happiness, however hard we may try for it. By promising this mythical state, people are definitely being misled. This is so true, ma'am. Some Vastu practitioners are creating fear and giving all kinds of strange solutions. Yes, that reminds me. Like I've seen some residences which were painted in fluorescent colors for the sake of Vastu. <laughs> this too is a new age gimmick. The traditional palette was Panchavarna or the five basic colors. Red, yellow, green, blue, black or Krishna Varna and sky blue. All these colors were made with natural materials and were therefore very healing to the space. The houses were whitewashed and sometimes turmeric powder was added to the lime wash and a beautiful golden color was given to the walls. Moreover, these colors were used sparingly in the residences of people as either borders or murals and frescoes. Only in the temples, these colors were used on walls, Vimana and Gopura. Using bright colors indiscriminately and that too made of toxic chemicals is not a traditional principle. In fact, it goes against the idea of harmonizing and balancing the dwelling with earth energies. Hmm. Wow, that is so true. Most times these structures stand out like sore sites, destroying the harmony. Yes, surely these colors look ridiculous, but what about the placement of rooms? Ma'am, like does the kitchen have to be only in the southeast? And is it must to have the master bedroom in the southwest? Why do people insist on having an opening or door in the northeast? Huh. Unfortunately, these are also unnecessary rules that have been fixed in the built form by the practitioners. The Shastras or texts have been written in various parts of the country and have specific reference to the terrain, thermal conditions, water tables and wind rain patterns of the locality. Not understanding any of this and applying simplistic formulae to every context is foolish as well as ineffective. One of the primary statements of the Vastu texts is to encourage the designer to become familiar with the environment and to design accordingly. Therefore, the placement of rooms has to be in accordance with the local rainfall, heat in the summer, wind directions, and water tables. For example, heavy rainfall areas like Kerala usually had their kitchen in the northeast with the well next to the kitchen. This geographical region also recommended the southwest to be higher because of the southwest monsoon and it would have lashed into the building otherwise. In general, the location of facilities will change based on the direction of the entrance, light and wind patterns, nature of the surrounding land and the neighborhood. There is no one perfect solution. Interesting to know that we have options for the placement of rooms. Otherwise, all Vasta compliant houses would be the same, isn't it? So what about the water sumps, septic tanks and bathrooms then? A point to remember here is that in the traditional house, toilets were kept outside the main building to its rear. 
bathing rooms were accepted within the built form. The reason is very simple and practical. Dealing with the effluent would have been complex and may have caused contamination of the water table. The location of water, sewage, would have to be in relationship to the natural slope of the land to facilitate the storage of rainwater and well water. Sewage was naturally recommended to the opposite side of the water source. Once again, northeast for water would have been the default location when many options are available. Wow. This means there are actually no such rules for placement of toilets as being suggested by Vastu experts. Are these some sort of marketing techniques then? Indeed, it is quite an upsetting thought that this is happening at the expense of the reputation of our own tradition. These so-called small myths are making people perceive thousands of years of our ancient wisdom in a negative way. But could that also mean that these texts are outdated and insignificant in the present day and age? Um, I wouldn't say that. The principles and philosophy enunciated in the texts as well as in the living examples of residences, palaces, warehouses, schools, chowl trees, villages and towns, and many others show us the appropriateness of the design and construction techniques. Who amongst us hasn't marveled at the beauty and comfort of a village house? What is important is to break up the components and understand the underlying order or harmony. Then it is possible to apply these principles to changing times and contexts. Amazing. So, Vastu is rightly still very relevant in our over times. We just need a proper study and understanding of these principles. Perhaps it needs to be seen as a science which speaks about a way of life and practiced much like yoga, I suppose. That is true. The science and principles of Vastu Shastra is large and all-encompassing. Our intention at Ritambhara is to teach people the traditions of Vastu and yoga and to remove the fear-inducing impact of the current teaching styles of these wonderful traditions. We welcome every kind of student to participate in our learning programs. 